a question to ask for you to ask yourself was the purpose of the Christian life what are we to do because first thoughts would be quite often get your sin under control another one is be like Jesus that's a very common one but those two things probably I think you can see what really go together be like Jesus get your sin under control well Jesus didn't have to get his sin under control so if we're thinking both these things that I think when you've been religious at least as a Christian you've had both those thoughts or some variation or form of them fun to be like Jesus who is God in the flesh I mean, at least I hope you understand and believe that he is divine are we really supposed to be divine or are we supposed to get our flesh under control and um I was thinking, so I just texted myself, was Jesus' main focus resisting sin? And if so, what was the sin he was resisting? The sin of disobeying commands or the sin of not trusting God? Well, I don't think his main focus was resisting sin for one thing. But if you want to put it in that context, if he was trying not to sin, what was it? What was it? Was the sin of not making a mistake? Because obviously... There was Pharisees and lawyers and everyone coming at him night and day trying to trip him up to get him to make a mistake where they could say he just disobeyed the law of Moses. He just blasphemed God. That, that was the, the main focus. Even though they used their own laws, they hardly ever focused on the law of Moses. They claimed they did. But was uh, I want to keep it focused here. Do you really think that Jesus was focusing on not sinning? Because if that's what you're trying to do and you're told to be like Jesus, there's something wrong here. Maybe you're not supposed to be like Jesus. Maybe you're not supposed to be focusing on not sinning. Maybe you're supposed to be focusing on being with him. Because he said he would never leave you nor forsake you. He will be with you always. That's what he said. I will be with you always. I will come to you. I will not leave you orphans. I will not leave you comfortless. I will be with you. You think that's touch and go? You think that's performance based? Was there a caveat after? I will not leave you comfortless. I will never leave you or forsake you unless you don't tithe enough next week or if you miss two out of the next seven services. No, it never means never. It's him. And it's always been him. And it'll always be him. That's what it's all about. It's his goodness. So the Christian life is being with Christ. That's what I would pose. You know, I'm answering the question, obviously. I ask you to ask yourself the question. I still encourage you to do that because I know people don't believe things just because I say them. But think about it. Think about what you're doing. Think about what I said. Is the Christian life to be like him or to be with him? Is the Christian life to avoid sin so he won't cast you away? When he never said he would cast you away. Do you think he's worried about losing you? Do you really think God's worried that he's going to lose one of his sheep? He said no one can snatch you from his hand. I take that literally. I don't know why he would say that if it was conditional. I don't like using that word unconditional because I think his love is perfect. It goes beyond unconditional. It's absolutely perfect. But you got to know that. If you know that, then it just makes sense to trust him. It's not that you, you go around not caring about your sin, but that becomes a side effect. It becomes a secondary thing. You don't focus on that either way. He changes that about you. So that's just something I, I want to throw out there and really think about it. What is it that you're to do? And did he really do that? Or did he just trust the Father? And that's why he had that peace that he had. And he wants to give it to you. Because it says he gives peace like, like no one gives. Not the world, not the church, not anyone. And that's the peace I want. In Jesus' name, amen.